Okay, welcome back to the shop. Now, if you haven't seen my previous video uh, building the table for this bench, I highly recommend you go check that out first. Also, there was an overwhelming yes to the question whether or not I should put up a video for this bench build. So here we are starting this build. Let's just jump right into it. So this is gonna start on the CNC. We've got two um, pieces of three quarter plywood laid up as a core, and we are cutting out the profile for the base on this bench. Now, I know a lot of you guys cannot relate to the CNC because you're hobbyist or you don't have this type of equipment. You can do this process. My dog may over there, by the way, he's a pretty good dog. He always loves a good ear scratch. You can do this easily. I used to do this for years without the CNC. You just make a quarter inch template, shape it to the profiles that you want, get it nice and smooth, and then um, use a flush trimming bit and flush trim cut it out on a bandsaw and flush trim it so I just wanted to share that I've got to band all these edges which essentially means we're going to cover the plywood edges with plot with um, pecan wood so I've cut a really thin sliver of wood here right off the bandsaw and I'm going to glue that on each on all three pieces and the thing that works out great for this is I used a half inch cutter to cut this profile out on the CNC so the waste is a perfect fit as a clamping block. Put a little piece of foam in there, which is actually a half inch thick. Compress that down and it clamps these up real nice. Gets even pressure across the board. And I'm using epoxy as my glue here and just clamp it on both the banding on the bottom and then the banding on the edges as well. We did it all in one shot, which uh, just makes things go a lot quicker. Now, like I said, this bench goes with the table I built in the last video. And if you've watched that video, you know how amazing the wood was on that tabletop. So we really wanted to utilize that wood in this bench as well. There was drop off in that slab. And the best way to use that material was to actually veneer it. So that's why we're coring this up. We're going to put veneers on this and use that curly wood. And it's going to be super cool. So you can see here, Robert's putting the banding on the edges. We're just using regular old type on two for that. And uh, those are about half inch, uh, probably three eighths thick pecan. Uh, when you band for veneer, you don't want to band it too thick um, because it can actually swell. And I've learned this the hard way and contract um, and pop the veneer, like just kind of shear it and put a little raised edge in your, in your face of your veneer. So keep those fairly thin. I don't know why I left these so wide. They hang past the, the plywood pretty far, but um, Robert, managed to make quick work of it on the table saw uh, and then once we get it knocked down you can actually use a flush trimming bit to run um, that flush to the plywood edge and that's just a bit that has a bearing on the bottom of it and it's gonna that bearing is gonna follow the plywood and flush trim the pecan to the plywood So one last quick easy step for us since we have it is run it through the wide belt, get it all flattened and smooth, take it down, you know, a 32nd or a 16th of an inch and everything is ready to put veneers on. Now again, if you don't have this machine, we're using a Baltic birch plywood, uh, so you can hand plane Baltic birch, so you could just hand plane it all nice and flat. Now, you only have so much you can do because those veneers, you know, they're about a sixteenth of an inch thick. The only issue with that is Russia makes all the Baltic birch and you can't get it anymore, so it's a problem. All right, so we bust out the uh, big old Oliver, my favorite machine in the shop. Love this bandsaw. Do some resawing on it. Every time we do it, I have to, I, you know, Robert, it was Robert's job to resaw these, but it's just so much fun to do. I had to jump in and do one. This thing is, we're resawing at it about 3 30 seconds of an inch thick, and then we'll run that through the wide belt, clean up the um, bandsaw marks, and then from there we can glue them up for width.
All right, so when we get off the bandsaw, I'm gonna give Robert a quick lesson on how we edge joint these using a hand plane. Uh, it's basically, we're using a shooting board I built quite a long time ago that you ride the hand plane on and it straight lines and, and dials in these edges to glue them up. You know, pretty easy, I always put, if it's, these are all gonna be bowed pretty good. So I put the cup like that, that way I can press pressure down. down like that. Okay. And then, you know, typically what, the biggest mistake you're gonna run into is doing like a, like that, dishing it out. You gotta kind of think the same way if you were doing a, doing it in the vise, where when you get towards the end here, the pressure, the pressure kind of needs to come back to the back of the plane. It's so easy to push so hard this way. It's okay. And it's, I, it I starts see, to create yeah, a little. That's where you got the hump. Oh, yeah, and I got that last one. Off. So this one's going to be. Oh, this one's pretty long. And then out of all, when you do this, the only plane we can use is this Lee Nielsen. Okay. Everything else is out of square. Okay. It's been the body dropped all. The yeah, and these okay. things have been bent, and this one's, you know, machined and dialed in. Okay. So that's that's where the money comes in when you're buying a plane. Yeah, I mean, it, the sole is perfectly flat. Yeah. Which makes a difference, and then you got sure. you got square edges here, especially if you're joining. Yeah. yeah. Right. So now, if you took a hard drop and hit here, it can bend it, and then then you can't shoot with it anymore. Okay. So that to me is pretty pretty good, man. All right. So as usual, Robert picks things up pretty quick and easy. So he was able to knock these out without much of an issue this is there, there's several different ways you can do this process um, but i find that the shooting board is mo the most enjoyable and really honestly the easiest once you figure out how to do it uh, you can also set up a jig and use a router with a straight straight line like piece of wood or plywood and a flush trimming bit and you know you could do multiple pieces if you do that but i prefer the quietness and the, the no dust method of just using the hand plane super enjoyable and it's a good skill to have and like i said I, that's what i love to share with you guys uh, a lot of y'all are hobbyists this is one of those things that you know with a hand plane and a quick jig sh a quick shooting board thrown together you can build one of these and knock out you can do a lot with this particular tool and this method okay so this is a technique i'm actually using for the first time and i want to give philip morley credit I saw him doing it on Instagram. Philip Morley is a local or a fellow Texas woodworker not far from me uh, who I look up to. Super talented guy, especially when it comes to veneers. That's that's his thing. So uh, these now, after we've sanded them, are probably close to an eighth of an inch thick, maybe a little heavy. We're going to put blue tape, stretch it real tight across the back. Um, I'm going to run a long piece across, the, across that glue joint as well. And then flip it over, and then you can just open this up like it's... I don't know, a book basically, and just run a bead of glue in there and then close it and it pinches it and it will glue it up, you know, real nice and neat. And the, the advantage to this is you get a good glue seam on your veneer before you lay it down on your substrate in the bag. It's just a different process. I don't know necessarily what's better. A lot of times you'll seam it up and then glue it onto the substrate and never glue this edge joint it's just glued flat down um i've done it that way for years and this is new to me i, th I liked it i thought it was cool we were able to go back after this glue dried and just sand these flat again through the wide belt and then press them down in the bag
Okay, so here we are. Get them in. Get them ready for the bag. I use this roller. I'll link this. It's, you can get this thing off Amazon. It works great. It's a little glue spreader. And you want to put glue on both your substrate and your veneer. That's a recent change for me. I used to only put glue on the substrate. But I was having some issues with, especially along the edges, not getting enough glue. And anywhere you don't get glue where you veneer, you can have serious problems. Um, so you want a plenty of glue spread across both um, parts. That way you know you've got enough there and you've got a, you've got a good glue joint across the entire piece of veneer. We use these little brad nails just to keep it from sliding, um, keep it in place. All right, so they go in the vacuum bag. Basically, this is a bag on a platen on a flat surface, uh, and it sucks the air out and puts a bunch of pressure and crushes them down and uh, glues everything up. If you're gonna do veneer work, it's, it's a must-have. It'll make your life, it'll make things super easy, and it's a bit of an investment, but it's worth it. You can see here me in the background probably editing video. I do a lot of that during the week. Um, I don't think you guys catch that part of things, but um, thankful to have Robert. So while I'm editing, some stuff's actually getting done. We drilled a hole. So you saw in the CNC in the very beginning of the video, we cut the mortises out, and we drilled a hole that was, I think, 9 sixteenths where those mortises are in the veneer. That's why we had to brad nail that veneer on because we couldn't allow it to slide because if that hole got off the mortise, then we wouldn't be able to get in there and clean it up. So the reason we put that hole in there is that way we could drop the bit in and actually cut out the mortise in the veneer matching the mortise in the substrate. Hopefully that makes sense. And then Robert squared it up with a chisel. Now on this piece, this is the center upright of the bench. It has a, a long slot cut down the length of it. So the router bit could just go right into it and cut it out. We didn't have to do that. Only the two outsides have the mortise, the through mortise that you're gonna see once we assemble it. On this, we've got tenons on the end of this. This is the stretcher that's gonna connect all three of those parts, those uprights. This is a very, very simple piece of furniture, which is pretty typical of shaker furniture. Um, you take any one part out of it and it's useless. So this is the stretcher. It has tenons on each side that go through the through mortises. And then this is kind of like a slip joint that that piece that you just saw Robert working on is gonna slide up into. Robert's just using the dado stack here to cut this out. Um, we always, I always lay out joints like this with hand tools, like I, like I would use hand tools. So I use layout lines with a marking knife, and make knife walls, and I cut it just like, you know, just with the hand saw, you can sneak up, up on it with a data saw and get right to your knife wall, right to your layout line. And it, to me, it's just a, a good practice. It's much more accurate uh, than a pencil line, and it's just a habit that I've developed over the years. He's also laid out how deep he needs to cut using a marking gauge. Um, so everything is laid out to precision, and you it's you know you can't cut. If you cut past that line, you know you're toast. So uh, I like using the marking lines. I think that's good practice. He doesn't go all the way on the table saw, which this is good. He decided to use the router plane, which is an awesome tool, to sneak up on his fit, which is a great, great thing to do. This little tool will make quick work of just adjusting the thickness of that joint there to fit the opening that he's cut in the upright. And you can see the layout lines right there with the marking gauge. You can literally put the blade of this tool into your layout line and get right to the thickness that you need. It's, it's the beauty of hand tools. It's why I love them so much. All right, so we're going to assemble this. These, the glue up on this was a challenge. I didn't really, as usual, I didn't really think this glue up through. But basically, the stretcher is going to go on this center upright first. It just slides right in. Then Robert made a little piece to come back and fill that, that um, gap or that leftover slot there and lock everything in place. And then we're going to come back and put the two end pieces on. And those will get wedged in with a, a wedge on the tenon. Same thing we did on the table base. So it's kind of a match. It's kind of a cool um, match of styles between the table base and the bench.
That's why I just left it in there when I was saying Is it sized to fit right now? Yeah, it should. Okay, so once we get the two ends in, um, we we're going to battle a little bit here to get the, everything coplanar. When I mean coplanar, all three of these uprights on the same plane, vertical, square to the stretcher, both um, vertical and, and sideways. I really thought in my head that it would be pretty simple to, to do all that with clamps and just manipulate it, but there's a lot going on because you're having the clamp from the outside to the center on both ends, and you're just pulling a, and things in different directions, and we could not get it to get coplanar and line up. We, we really struggled with it. Finally, what we decided in the middle of the glue-up was to make um, spacer boards that we could fit in between the two uprights and you're about to see those right here and those kind of help keep those things locked locked in if they're all the same length and they're all the proper length you should be able to just pull tight to those and everything be lined up and it works pretty good we we, we didn't get it dialed in exactly perfect but we were pretty darn close All right, I want to jump in real quick because that is basically the footage I got for this bench build. And I'm going to show you some really cool finished photos of it uh, here in a second. But I want to uh, talk you through kind of the ending of this. First, I want to say there was a gentleman who commented on my last video, the table build, and mentioned how he thought that um, he thought the videos were a little bit more rushed. There was less content there. And I have to say to some extent that's probably true. Uh, but I'm still working on the transition of bringing Robert into the shop. Um, and meshing that in with YouTube, things have changed a lot. Uh, my workload, the things I do, um, and the, the focus on the video is a little bit more difficult. A lot of times I'm not in the shop, um, I'm running errands or doing things, and Robert's here working, and if he's working, um, he's going to have to take the reins on the camera and shoot the footage, and he's still kind of working on that. He's doing a great job. Some of the shots in this video were shots he took and footage he did, so um, he's filling in the gaps really well, and, and I'm very thankful to have them here. We are knocking through a lot more furniture than I used to do on my own. Um, and the furniture business is doing great. We just got a little work to do to mesh that into the YouTube channel. So my apologies for some of um, some of the builds that might be lacking in footage. My hope really is that I can get the momentum rolling again on the channel. You know, it's kind of slowed down a little bit, but if I can get it kicking again and get the views back up, uh, we can bring in a third guy to manage all the video work and editing and social media, which I would absolutely love. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a little bit tired of doing all that, and I think um, having help on that front would be awesome. So with that all said, let me explain uh, kind of how we finish this off. So we used a single board for the seat on this, not, not super exciting, uh, just basically a single chunk of pecan that we sanded and rounded the edges. But one thing we did do on this is we put locating pins at each upright. Not only did that help position the um, bases onto the to the bench seat, it also gives a little bit of stability. So we put a dowel in the uprights so that drops into a hole on the seat. They're a little bit splayed or a little bit bowed because we did have trouble clamping them. We can suck them right in an upright position and hold them in place with those dowels. And then we just attach the tabletop using buttons, which Robert cut using uh, the Festool Domino, which is kind of the standard way we put attachments or buttons into any tabletop or bench seat like this. One of the last orders of business was shaping the through tenons, uh, putting a little chamfer on those, matching how we did it on the table. So when you see the table and the bench, there's kind of this symmetry and this match between those through tenons and how we chamfer and clean those up. And that's basically it. We finished this with the same finish as the table. It's conversion varnish. It's just sprayed three, uh, probably three or four coats on there. And uh, I just think it came out looking great. The idea of using the, the, the pecan off the drop off from the slab for the veneers on the upright, that was a great idea. That was not our original game plan at all. I was originally gonna keep it separate, but we had this drop off from the top and we couldn't use it without using it as veneers because we didn't have enough material to cut three uprights out of it. Uh, those were about 15 inches wide, I think. So um, it worked out great veneering it. And man, that we got to use some premium curly wood. It just looks awesome. Wait till you see the photos. Really, the lines on this bench are incredible, too. I, I couldn't be happy with how it came out. The way the curves are on the bottom, I like how high they rise up and the tapers. Um, it's just a really genuinely cool piece that's a tip of the hat to the shakers. Uh, definitely looks a lot like a shaker bench. So, enough talking. Let me show you the finished photos. Thanks, as always, for tuning in. Appreciate you guys. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. 
Um, sitting right here next to me is our next build video, and it's gonna be awesome. I'm telling you, this is a huge challenge. We have had a really hard time with it. We're still having a hard time with it, but we're gonna get this done. And this is gonna be an exciting video for you guys. So I can't wait to share it with you. As always, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.